In this video, I'm going to review the top 5 best GPUs for Ryzen 7 3800X in 2021. As long as you stay within the range of stock clocks, you're not going to have to take extreme measures to maximize the performance of the Ryzen 7 3700X. It's especially important to invest in something more powerful when it comes to 1080 resolution and the best possible performance. We researched a variety of GPUs to ease your distress and have cherry-picked some of the best models for Ryzen 7 3700X. I leave the links to the discussed CPUs in the description, you can check them for more information and the latest prices. So let's get started. Starting our list with AMD Radeon Navi 5700 XT. The AMD Radeon Navi 5700 XT is declared as an incredible graphics card, though the Apprentice GPU coveting its Dark Master's power. Navi 5700 XT features a 7-phase design, 7nm process, and an RDNA architecture that delivers 25% more performance per clock than its brother, the RX Vega 64, while having less bandwidth and fewer computing units. AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT is aimed at competing with the also recently announced RTX Super Series, specifically the RTX 2070 Super and above. In terms of graphics card performance, AMD has not always been at par with Nvidia, but with the launch of their Navi series of graphics cards, we think that may have changed. It utilizes a lower type cooler which provides excellent cooling. We have yet to see aftermarket versions of the 5700 XT cards, which could improve cooling even further performance. On the connectivity front, the Navi 5700 XT features three DisplayPort connectors, one HDMI 2.0 connector, and lacks a USB Type-C connector as found on the new RTX Super Series graphics cards, as well as Virtulink, a technology we love. The Navi 5700 XT is the perfect graphics card for the Ryzen 7 3800X for anyone building a Ryzen 7 3800X, and needs a fast and powerful graphics card that offers great value for its specs. This graphics card would be great if AMD bundled it with the Ryzen 7 3800X and offered a combo discount so builders could use it in place of Nvidia. It's great quad HD performance and future-proofed for ray tracing support decent overclocking potential. This is also a great card to get, seeing as it will almost never drop below the 144 frames per second mark at that resolution. At number 2 it is NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super's performance is exceptional as it is good at doing what it is designed to do. It is a moderate-cost GPU, which is a great option for gamers who are in search of a high refresh rate. This new RTX 2070 Super graphics card is perfect for gamers who play 1440p or even 4K at 1440p. The 2% performance increase over GTX 1080 Ti means enthusiasts can also play games at this resolution. In terms of specifications, the RTX 2070 Super has a base clock of 1605 MHz and a boost clock of 1770 MHz, along with 448 GB per second of memory bandwidth and a rated TDP of 215 Watt. As well, the RTX 2060 Super works well with the Ryzen 7 3800X, although the 2070 Super is better suited to the performance of the 3800X, whereas the 2060 Super works well with the Ryzen 5 3600X NVIDIA's RTX Super series of graphics cards is an update on their Pascal-based RTX cards and are well received by PC builders due to their improvement on performance. With this generation of NVIDIA graphics cards, value has an even bigger impact than with the previous generation, which makes the RTX Super graphics cards good alternatives for future Ryzen 2 builds. Overall, GeForce RTX 2070 Super is a great investment for those who are looking to cool the Ryzen 7 3800X. At number 3 it is NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. The Ryzen 7 3800X would be an excellent choice paired alongside the RTX 2080 Ti. This combination would create a Monster 3800X build that would produce some serious benchmark results and high frame rates. For the moment, the RTX 2080 Ti is the best consumer-grade graphics card on the market. If you're considering a Ryzen 7 3800X plus RTX 2080 Ti build, we strongly suggest that you check it out. RTX 2080 Ti graphics cards will handle 1440p 100Hz or 4K 60Hz in your Zen 2 build, if you are gaming at that resolution, or higher in 2021. When it comes to where to get an RTX 2080 Ti card, there is plenty available aftermarket, but they all command quite a premium over retail-priced cards due to their high demand and limited availability. Right now, our favorite RTX 2080 Ti card in 2021 is the ASUS ROG Strix Edition. We have a separate guide dedicated to the best aftermarket RTX 2080 Ti cards here. Besides having great and efficient power delivery, a gigantic triple fan cooling setup, and an extremely high stock base and boost clocks with room to overclock further. We believe this is the best choice. 
the ASUS RTX 2080 Ti Strix card is a good choice for your Ryzen 7 3800X build if you can get your hands on it. Without any stuttering or frame rate drops, it works correctly. That's right, it's Minecraft 2. Considering the price, it's incredibly powerful. Additionally, it is capable of running most AAA titles at 60 frames per second with 4K resolution. There is of course no graphics card on this list with a higher power rating than this one. At number 4 it is XFX RX 5600 XTTHICC2 Pro. XFX RX 5600 XTTHICC2 Pro is a graphics card that boasts remarkable performance, but its apprentice GPU covets the power of her dark master. The dust has settled, and the RX 5600 XTTHICC2 Pro has emerged as the best cheap graphics card for performance. This card promises performance above and beyond what AMD's reference design might offer. It has four copper heat pipes and two 100mm fans. AMD decided to remove critical BIOS restrictions at the last minute, despite the card initially being available with reference specs. The company has since provided users with pro-tuned versions of the firmware which significantly increase the clock speeds, improving performance. The processor die is based on a 7nm architecture, and the memory functions are handled by 6GB of GDDR6 memory. This card has a 14GB PS bus, rather than the 10GB PS bus in the THICC 2nd edition. The card is also built to run on a much faster PCE Generation 4.0 interface. A budget card that performs well all around. When using DirectX 12 and ultra quality settings, the card maintains 100 plus FPS across the board in Battlefield V. As the resolution is increased to 1440p, the frame rate falls to 80 plus FPS and hovers in the low 40s when switching to 4K. The performance is similar in Strange Brigade, where the GPU manages 125 plus FPS in 1080p and 90 plus FPS in 1440p, along with a very playable 50 plus FPS in 4K AAA games with more demanding graphics become more noticeable. At 1080p, performance is exceptionally good, however, Metro Exodus and Shadow of the Tomb Raider struggle to maintain 60 FPS. With 4K resolution, both titles frequently dip below 30 FPS. Overall, this budget card is an excellent option if you prefer to play at 1080p and occasionally play at 1440p in less demanding titles and experts. And the last one is PowerColor Red Devil Radian RX 5700 XTHGB. Although it's not cheap it definitely is affordable than the RTX graphics cards and costs just $250 giving you the ultimate performance you need for professional gaming. If you're looking to take things up a notch and have extra money to spare, this PowerColor card looks promising. PowerColor's flagship Navi comes with a premium build quality, huge cooling, great aesthetics, RGB lighting, and most importantly, factory overclocking. With 8GB of GDDR8, the card can provide excellent bandwidth over a 256-bit memory bus. It's designed to fit into a Psi Generation 4.0 by 16 slot and comes with a triple slot cooling solution with a massive aluminum fin stack heat sink. Three fans cool the fin stacks, which also contain copper heat pipes. Through this type of cooling, PowerColor was able to increase the card's power limits and overclock it to close to 2 GHz. Dual BIOS mode allows you to choose between a powerful BIOS version and a more silent one with a quiet mode option. To complement all the RGB bling in the card, an RGB mousepad comes with the accessory package. The performance of this card is excellent across the board. A full 1080p frame rate of 160 frames per second is achieved in Battlefield V, as well as 120 plus frames per second in 1440p. When using the card in 4K, the frame rate stays steady at 70 plus FPS most of the time. Strange Brigade has similar numbers. When gaming at 4K, the card struggles a bit, but it still remains a reliable performer provided you don't mind lowering those quality levels. In conclusion, we will summarize this video by saying that a graphics card is one of the most important components in the field of gaming, and any of these cards will work well for enhancing performance in games. Choosing the best option to meet your budget and requirements is now up to you. In my opinion, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super is the overall best GPU in terms of better gaming performance. The link is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching this video.